Good morning. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You can put your hand down and please be seated. <coughs> Please uh, speak into the microphone and state your full name and spell your last name for the record. Sure. My name is Ivy Seamus. It's S-C-H-A-M-I-S. Okay. And Ms. Seamus, uh, thank you. Ms. Seamus, uh, uh, are you employed? Yes. What do, you, what do you do for a living? Well, for about 20 years, I was a social studies educator at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, but I am currently an office administrator at Milton Gottesman Jewish Day School of the nation's capital. Okay. Um, and you were at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas from what years? From 2001, um, and I was employed until 20, the beginning of 2020. Was that Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, was that your first teaching assignment? No, I taught a couple of years in Dade County and then took a break to raise my children and then started up again at, at, at Broward. Okay, and um, I'd like to call your attention to February the 14th, 2018. You remember that date? I do. Okay, and where were you, te where were you teaching at that time? I know you were teaching at Marjorie Stone Douglas, but where in the campus? Yes, I was in room 1214 on the first floor. Okay, and how long had you been in that classroom, as, as assigned that classroom? Yes, that, that classroom was my classroom since the building was erected in 2009. So I was the only teacher in room 1214 the entire time. Okay, and what were you teaching? I was, I was a social studies teacher. Um, that day I taught international relations, academic elective, and history of the Holocaust, another academic elective. Okay, and 1214... Um, who, the class next to you is, is classroom 1215? Yes, I think so. Well, let me show you. I don't remember the classroom numbers. States Exhibit Mark uh, 7. Okay. Can you see that? Not yet. Okay, yes, I can see it. Okay, and there's going to be something coming up in a minute, and you can circle 1214. The colors on the bottom of the screen. Okay, and obviously 1215 is uh, the adjoining classroom, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And is there a part, little partition between your classroom and classroom 1215? There's an alcove. Okay. And but there's a wall between the both classrooms. Uh, I'm talking outside. The outside, door. yes. Okay. And the doors, were they open in or out? The classroom door opens in, um, out. It opens out. <laughs> can remember sure? it opens okay. out okay all right it opens out and when you go outside of uh, your classroom 1214 uh is there a little wall between yes okay how big is the wall <clears throat> oh goodness a few feet okay all right uh and who had the classroom next door to you in 1215 julie matlock okay so on February the 14th, 2018, fourth period, please tell us what occurred. Um, February 14, 2018, fourth period, was my history of the Holocaust class. It was an academic elective for juniors and seniors. Um, it started out great. It was a happy day because it was Valentine's Day and the kids were bringing in candy and stuffed animals and um, flowers. And it, I had planned a lesson that day to cover the 1936 Olympics because the 2018 Olympics in Pyeongchang were happening at the same time. And um, the it's a 90 minute class and the students started out, they completed an activity we had done the class before 
and we were actually talking about hate on college campuses. And um, then the students had laptops on their desk. We were watching testimony <coughs> from Eyewitness. It's a program online from through the Shoah Foundation. And um, the students were doing that activity and watching testimony. And when they completed it, there was about maybe 20, 25 minutes left of class. So I wanted to start the next, the next lesson. And we were going to talk about the Jesse Owen story. That's what we were doing. We were going to talk about the Jesse Owen story. And I had put up on the Recordex, which is a large screen, um, sort of like a TV screen, but you can write on it a, an interactive whiteboard. And I put on there key characters from the Jesse Owen story. And I asked the students, um, it was sort of a discussion about who they might have already known and what they knew about Jesse Owens. And I asked the students um, if they knew who Adi Dossler was, because he was up on the board and, and most students got a kick out of that because it sounded familiar. And Nicholas Dworet in my class raised his hand and he got excited and he said, I know who Adi Dossler is. He was the German shoemaker, who he owned a shoe factory, who started the Adidas company. And he was up there because his, he made the shoes, for the track shoes that Jesse Owens wore when he won his four gold medals. Um, and the class was super excited because he knew the answer and we were so happy for him. And then he also stated that Rudy Dossler was his brother who, was the, who started the Puma shoe factory. And, and we were not so, totally surprised because Nick was an athlete and he knew these things. And it was at that very moment um, when he had that aha moment that he, that he knew the answer to that, we heard very loud shots going off in the hallway right outside the classroom door. Okay, and then what happened? And um, so it was just for maybe a second, the students just, you know, it was almost like we stopped in our tracks and they flew out of their seats and tried to find cover. I mean, in my mind, it was unmistakable that that was gunshots. Um, again, I obviously didn't know, but they, so the students flew out of their seats trying to find cover in a very small room that had a window, a wall full of windows. There was a front door with a, a large window, to me it was large, going down the center. Um, that was not bulletproof. Um, they, there was a lot of furniture in the classroom, and there were a lot of students in that classroom. So How many the, students were in your classroom? There were, I believe, 30 that day. Okay. There were a few absent. Um, but it's a small room to have, you know, many students. I had about, I want to say, 35 or 37 desks in there, something like that, because I'm, some of my other electives were larger. And... Um, and they tried to find cover wherever they could. We didn't have much time, but they scrambled to different parts of the room, sort of along the perimeter, and some tried to get behind the laptop card, and some tried to get behind a, a, a file cabinet and the recordex board. Um, Hannah and Shannon went under the, the, the well of the teacher desk. Um, so I stood there for a second while they all tried to get cover. Uh, we had never had a drill or anything to tell us what to do or where to go. But um, a young lady named Kelly Plor looked up and she called me over. So I, um, I ran to her. She said that she was thinking of her mom and what her mom would do in this situation. So we, we all were sort of down on the ground. We were on the, on the floor trying to hide behind whatever we could. Um, and it was really seconds later that the barrel of that AR-15 just ambushed our classroom. It came right through that glass door, uh, the glass panel in the door, excuse me, and was just sh shooting everywhere. It was extremely loud. It was very frightening. Um, and I kept thinking about these kids that should not be experiencing this at all. Okay, and did you see anyone uh, wounded? I did not see, we were all close to the ground, like laying on the ground. I did not see any 
anything at that time, okay. no. All right, so what happened next? So from where I was uh, laying on the floor with Kelly, I could see the handle of the door. The door was locked, but it really wouldn't have mattered because whoever was out there, shooter or shooters, which we didn't know at the time, could have easily put their hand through the panel of the door and, and open the door. And then I thought, well, that, that, that was it. Um, and uh, it, it, it didn't happen because um, just as I was thinking what to do as the only adult in that classroom there, the, I heard the shooting across the hall. Okay. And how, uh, how long did you hear the, the shooting? You heard it down the hall? Did you hear it anywhere else? Um, yes. And, and at some point, a fire alarm went off, so it was hard to hear everything um, that, was, that was going on. We heard, it, we heard it down the hall, and then we heard it further. We heard it further, but nobody moved. Nobody moved because, and again, I found out later, I think, from some of the whatever they, that they, he did come back. We were worried that whoever it was, um, that the killer or shooter would come back. And, and so... Um, and the students were quite mature. I was unbelievably proud, and they were incredibly brave. Just shh, they shh, shh. No one said anything. Very, very quiet. Um, just worried that that was going to happen again. All right. Did you hear anything above you? I, I might have. I mean, on the second floor. Or anywhere. I, I, we, no. we might have heard, but then again, the fire alarm at one point went on, so it it, did, it muffled sounds of 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 the sh shooting. Okay. And how long did you wait before there was a police response? So, like I said, we were very, very quiet. I think students were on their phone trying to get service or, or texting their loved ones or their boyfriend or girlfriend. So maybe between 15 and 20 minutes, we waited for someone to come rescue us. But um, the young lady, Kelly, who was next to me, was able to get a bar of service. So she said, um, I heard her saying to 911, 9 12-14. So I thought they would come soon because they knew what room we were in. Okay. And uh, when the police came, did you see anyone who was injured? So when the police came, um, they, they were screaming. SWAT was screaming in the hallway and got into the classroom door the same way that I thought anyone else would get in, they just stuck their hand through that, through that glass panel um, and told us to put our hands up and was screaming um, who, for the injured. So that's when I saw the four students that were injured in my class. And, and who did you see injured? Um, Daniel Meniscal and um, Isabel Checker, Samantha Grady, and then Samantha Fuentes. Okay. And uh, was there anyone who uh, that you saw that wasn't wounded, who wasn't moving? I didn't, because they told us, don't look, they were screaming at us, screaming, because they said they didn't find the shooter, and so they could have been anywhere, so they were screaming at us to put our hands up and not to look down and, and to run out. Okay. All right, let me show you now State's Exhibit marked 3S for a Yes, for identification. You know who that is? That's my girl, Helena. What's your full name? It's Helena Ramsey. And three R. And that's Nicholas Dwaret, handsome boy. Uh, at this time, Your Honor, I'd like to offer state's exhibits three S and three R. No objection. States 3R for identification will be received as states 54, I'm sorry, 55, and states 3S as in SAM for identification will be received as states 56. There are, I have no further questions of Ms. Shamus. Is it any questions? No, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.